A small portion of this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build and design your stunning new website. Hey guys, Mark here. A few weeks ago, I asked what kind of video you'd like to see next over on my community page, and a few of you mentioned that you'd like to see what apps I use in my daily life or a what's on my phone type video. That's a great idea, so let's do it. So this is the phone that I'm currently using as my main phone or my daily driver, if you'd like to call it that. It's the Pixel 4a, and if you've watched one of my Pixel 4a videos recently, you'll notice that I have a completely different theme going on now. And that's because I'm constantly changing things up. The amount of customization you get in Android is one of my favorite things about it, and I'm constantly taking full advantage of that. But there are a few things that stay consistent no matter what theme I'm using, so let's talk about those first. The first thing I always do when I pick up a new phone is to make sure to enable gesture-based navigation. Since I'm always switching between Android and iOS to test new phones, it makes the transition between devices smoother, and I also like not having the navigation buttons at the bottom for a cleaner look overall. The second thing I do right after that is install my launcher of choice, which is always Nova Launcher. If you're unfamiliar with launchers, they're basically the way to go when it comes to unlocking the full range of customization options within Android. Nova Launcher lets you change pretty much everything. For example, the default Pixel Launcher's homepage doesn't really fit the theme of what I'm going for with the Google search bar at the bottom and the at a glance card at the top, so switching to Nova Launcher quickly gets rid of those. I'll leave the links to the launcher and a bunch of other stuff featured in this video in the description down below if you're interested in using any of them yourself. Inside the Nova Launcher settings, there are a few things that I do depending on the theme I'm working with. For this theme in particular, I was going for a minimalist light mode vibe, so I went into the look and feel settings and turned off the notification bar on the home screen. I also eventually turned off the dock completely and recreated it with widgets, which we'll talk about in just a bit. The app drawer is completely different too, and that's because I swapped out the default pixel icons for just a custom white icon pack inside the Nova Launcher settings. Before I get into what apps I use as well as what's on the home screen itself, I just want to quickly thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is a platform that comes with everything you need to build professional websites, online stores, or portfolios. They've got tons of features that make it super easy to build a great looking website in no time at all. Beyond that, they've got detailed SEO tools for getting your website found on search engines like Google, email campaigns for spreading your messages, e-commerce tools for setting up an online store, and a bunch of other stuff to get your website off the ground. Once it is off the ground, they've also got detailed analytics pages to make sure you know how your site is performing at any time. I built this little portfolio site for my YouTube channel in less than 15 minutes, and it's optimized for both mobile and desktop use. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to hit publish on your brand new website, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a custom domain. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this portion of the video, and now back to customization on the foray. All right, let's talk about the apps and home screen. I usually try and keep a clean set of home pages on my phone, but specifically for this video, I went a little above and beyond. Everything you see on both of these pages were created with an app called KWGT Pro, which is a custom widget maker. There's no real icons, docs, or anything stock Android here. It's completely done with widgets. All of these widgets were created inside of that app using the Shadow KWGT pack, which is also available on the Google Play Store for like 99 cents or something. I can't really take much credit for any of this design work other than some minor tweaks to the widgets here and there. But that's a good thing because it means that any one of you can do the exact same thing that I did here with just a little bit of tweaking if you have this pack along with KWGT Pro. This shadow pack has a ton of different widgets, and the best part about it is that almost every light mode widget has a corresponding dark mode widget, so you can easily do this exact same thing with a black wallpaper to save your eyeballs in the morning and save battery life if you want to. So, at the top of my home screen, there's a widget for some Google apps and clearing notifications, as well as a place for today's date. Then below that, we have a couple of cards that show the weather at my current location and the time. Also, can I just say that the guy that designed these widgets is a really freaking good UI designer? Like, somehow, this looks more Google branded than Google's own Pixel Launcher. Anyway, below the weather and time is a card that shows my battery life as well as has shortcuts to both my settings page and my files app. Under that are the four most used apps on my phone. 
YouTube, which I spend way, way too much time on, Instagram and Twitter, which you should definitely follow me on if you haven't already, and then just the standard SMS app. At the bottom of the page is a custom dock that I modified using one of the widgets. There's buttons for the phone app and Google Chrome, as well as a button in the center to bring up the app drawer. A lot of people will stick a camera button on their homepage, but I don't bother since I always have the gesture that allows me to double tap the power button to quickly bring up the camera app. All right, second page. First, as I'm sure you've noticed by now, there's a transition between these two pages like a revolving door, and you can change that too in the Nova Launcher under home screen transition effects. Right up at the top of the second page is another custom widget for music and podcasts. This one is actually a little bit more unnecessary now that Android 11 has a card for that inside the notification shade, but I like the look of it up at the top and it saves me having to swipe down the shade every time to access my media controls. Either way, I use Spotify for pretty much everything, whether it be music or listening to my favorite podcasts. And I listen to a lot of podcasts from just about every other tech YouTuber out there. Marquez's Waveform, Sarah Dietschy's That Creative Life, Linus's WAN Show, The Verge Cast. It's one of the few things that keeps me motivated to keep creating content in these crazy times. Below the music widget is a fairly basic calendar card that will show me the current date and clicking on it will bring up my Google Calendar so that I can schedule in things. I could add a more functional calendar app to the homepage, but that would kind of mess up the whole theme and I'm fine with favoring form over function in something small like this. Finally, at the bottom above the dock are the four other apps I use on a semi-regular basis. Google Docs for reading and writing scripts, Discord for communicating with friends, the YouTube Studio app for checking my analytics, and the Google Play Store app. All of the other apps that I use on a monthly basis, but not very frequently, are left inside the app drawer. Stuff like mobile games that I only play when I'm traveling, restaurant apps, online store apps, etc. To be honest with you guys, I'm actually not much of a hardcore mobile user. I might seem like it with all the new smartphones I review, but that's mostly because I love playing with new tech, not because I spend all of my time on my phone. I spend a lot more time on either my gaming PC or my iPad Pro, both which are just as customized, but that's a video for another day. So that's my Android 11 setup. This took a lot of work to set up. I highly recommend both Nova Launcher Prime and KWGT Pro to get the most out of the customization features of Android. But just know that if you go down that rabbit hole, don't be surprised to spend upwards of five to six hours just customizing your home screen. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this look into how I customized my Pixel 4a. And if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to support my channel. And as always, have a great day.